Hey GH peeps, welcome back to my channel where we talk all things General Hospital. Today's late night review is for hump day. That's right folks, it is Wednesday, June the 5th, 2024. I hope you guys had a good Wednesday. I had a pretty good Wednesday. I cannot complain. I can't complain, no. You really can't. Um, how was GH GH in for you? Any highs? Any super super lows, guys? Yeah, Gregory's funeral was was was, was kind of sad. It was sad. It was well done. Um, but I'm just gonna talk about it. Please leave your highlights and comments in the comment section. I had a great time reading your guys' comments today. I was laughing a little too hard at work. Um, but like I said, yeah, please leave your highlights and comments in the comment section. You guys be killing it. I'm telling you right now. Um, and if you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. I really do appreciate that. Gets my video out there in the soapy algorithm of things. But anyway, let's get into it. So the, today's, show, today's show starts off with Gregory's homecoming. And we see Chase and he's writing, you know, what he's going to say at his dad's um, going away. And at Finn's house... We have the health provider picking up what I want to say is Gregory's CPAP machine from Finn's place. But watching Finn um, calm Violet's hair was very touching. I just, father and daughter moments, I love those. It's like Finn is the only real dad on this soap. He's the only one who's always with his kid, always doing something with his kid if he's not, you know, doing his own thing. But he's the only real dad. I mean, guys, come on, let's think about it. Um, Jason don't see his kids. Well, you know, you know that story. And Scout, who who is her daddy? You know what I'm saying? And even Dante, he's a pretty good dad, and he's probably the other only father. But we don't even see Dante with his kids as much as we see him with Sam's. Just saying, just saying. Um, yeah, Finn's the only dad. And if the, if I'm wrong, y'all let me know. But I'm really thinking. I mean, we're not talking about like Brooklyn and them, but. As kids go, I feel like Finn's the only dad. He's only doing the dad stuff. But um, Brooklyn, you know, she got her man. But guys, when Finn opened the door for Chase and he's sitting there holding Gregory's box, I was like, okay, this is much. I can't just leave him in the car. Dude, Finn is looking at the box like, I just feel like, and this is my personal opinion, that that was not appropriate. Why? Because the girl, <laughs> she's a kid. Like, you could have just left that in the car, dude. Violet's right there, man. I mean, I know she's going to see it later, but she's a kid. She's a child, okay? And his reasoning was kind of, it made me think that Chase was not too much older than Violet. My opinion. I don't know, but I just, he could have left that in the car. I agree with Finn on that one. So we're at the um, favorite part in the park where his bench is and Liz and her boys meet Finn along with Alexis and Tracy it was a nice um, some you know his surrounding family and friends that came out and they did dedicate his favorite bench in his name and that was sweet Violet gives her granddad's box a kiss and, and guys I guess we do have a new Aiden we do and I'm trying to figure out like why Aiden yeah it was pretty nice looking I mean he was a you know cool looking kid um, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with this young man. Nothing at all. Just wondering why they replaced it. And I wonder if it's because of, you know, they're about to start showing Aiden more, you know, in his lifestyle. And maybe this young man isn't, you know, actually in that lifestyle. That could be it. Not saying that straights can't play those roles, but maybe they wanted, and, he's, and the original, the other Aiden was kind of young too. But maybe they wanted to get somebody that was actually in that lifestyle to play that role. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying any. I'm just throwing things out there, guys. Don't come for me. But, yeah. So, but we do have an official. I mean, they've had this child on here twice. And no one said anything about the other one coming back. So, I can imagine that he's taking over. Uh, that he's going to be our new Aiden. And Liz's, Liz's facial expressions. <laughs> I mean, I can't make them. That's how bad they are. <laughs> I can't stand them. I did love um, Finn reading Psalms 121. That is a very good verse. And it was appropriate for the setting. Shocking reveal. <laughs> Alexis kissing Gregory. Tracy like, huh? What? what? Brooklyn, you know about that? Brooklyn, like, how would I know about that? Girl, I don't know about that. My moment. 
moment. I really wish when Tracy was talking, I really wish Tracy and Gregory could have hit it off. And her hurting over a missed opportunity was just heartbreaking, you know? And then Violet gets to read the last poem that her granddad read to her. And it sounded like, you know, she's like, it sounds like I don't believe in ghosts, but it was kind of, you know, giving her courage to after losing her granddaddy. Another highlight moment for me was how Finn was holding that box like this. And I was like, any minute them ashes is going to come dumping out that box. I'm just saying, he had to tilt it over. Not all the way, but... And I see that, you know, when Chase finally opened it and they opened it, you know, they started spreading it, but... Uh, another highlight moment, Tracy in Brooklyn taking shots for Greg's honor. <laughs> for Gregory's honor. Oh my goodness, okay, so Brooklyn and Chase are worried about Finn and want Violet to stay with him. With them. And Tracy doesn't agree with that, and she thinks that, um... Uh, Finn really does need his daughter as much as Violet needs her father. And guys, at first, I was like, I agree with Tracy. You know what I'm saying? Why everybody? Why is everybody trying to take Finn's kid? It's just, it's just starting to become like weird. You know, like what is this all about? Well, we are gonna get to that in a minute. Cause why I changed my mind. So Alexis was my Finn. Alexis reminds Finn that he is a good son because I feel like Finn doesn't think he was, even though his him and his dad did make up. Finn asked Alexis about the kiss and was there like a possible secret romance between him and his father, her and her father, and she lets him know that she was too scared to um to get into a relationship with somebody that was dying. And you know what? I feel that. I felt that. I mean, and I don't blame her for feeling that way. I would be nervous too. I would I would be scared to fall in love with somebody too because you give your heart, you get all invested, and then they just leave you just like that. I mean, it's different when you don't know, but when you do know, I don't know. I don't. I I, I have to agree with Alexis. I wouldn't have called myself a coward for anything. I would. She's protecting her her peace. You know what I'm saying? Chase is going to Brooklyn. That is going to tell Brooklyn that he loves her every time he walks away from her. And I think that's really beautiful, but it might become a little creepy. And no, not creepy. A little annoying after a while. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I love you too. Now go. Guys, Elizabeth just can't handle Finn's grief. Let's just lay that out. Hands down. She can't handle Finn's grief. And everything he says is like she's looking for a sign. Oh, he's going to turn back into the drinking. Everything he says, oh, he's going to turn back to the drinking. I was really hoping for our boy. But I, I continue that he can't even be honest with her about his feelings without her judging him. I felt that judging all the way. And I really hope maybe they can build a role between him and Alexis because it seems like she understands him more. I, I wasn't happy that he turned her down for going to a meeting. But maybe that's because he knew what he was about to be doing. Oh, my goodness, Tracy and Alexis hugging. I guess grief does cure all pettiness, at least temporarily, right? Um, Chase goes to look for Finn. And what is Finn doing? He at the bar having shots while Violet is sitting alone reading a book. And I'm like, dude. Now, you know what? I was cheer cheer cheering you on, Finn. And this is what you doing, bro, while your baby girl sitting there missing her granddaddy. You you, you over there tossing tossing back shots. And I ain't going to lie to you. Grief and liquor does not mix. And Violet don't need that right now. And uh, Chase didn't look happy about it. And I'm just going to say this, guys. This is lazy writing. Okay? I don't want to see Finn become no alcoholic. I don't want to see this. Really? Yeah, um, yeah, this, this was, no, I'm sorry, this, this is a no for me. You could have did anything else but this, okay? Give him a hospital emergency, how something happened at something, anything. I don't want, I, I, I no. So y'all, so this is how messed up I see this. So General Hospital is going to destroy the only real father on the show. That's how I see it, guys. They're destroying the only real father 
on this show because who else is a father on this show? I mean, let's be real. Who 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 hanging out with their kids? Sonny don't see his kids. We ain't seen Avery or Let's see. Uh, we already know, like I said about Scout. Jason, he ain't seeing his kids. Well, I, whatever. Who else is a dad? Um, Valentine shipped his crazy kid back to wherever she was so he can go move Anna back in. I can't think of if I'm skipping. If I'm missing a oh, if I'm missing a parent with a, other than Dante. We don't see Dante with his kids. We see Dante with Sam's kids more than his own child, Rocco. So, guys, their General House GH is destroying the only real father on the show. I was not happy with that. I just, they could have did anything. They could have did anything but that, okay? Moving along, Blaze is at the recording studio, and uh, Natalie can notice that her daughter is sad. And guys, by the end of this scene, I just wanted to run Natalie over. I know I hear, I, I heard, I heard one of, one of my, uh, one, somebody had commented that you know Natalie's a mom and she's being a mom. But that this is not being a mom. If this is being a mom, I, I, I guess I wasn't doing the right momming, because this is not the kind of momming that I, I'm familiar with. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm gonna get into this. And uh, yeah, they're like, she has right to have her feelings. Well, we'll stand on it then. That's see, I, I agree. Everybody has the right to have their feelings. But when you have a grown adult kid and you can't stand on it with your grown adult kid, and then you sit here and you give face to everybody else, but you all up in there doing just doing something different with your grown. I'm, I just know it. I see that as a form of manipulation, not mommy. Not mommy. I, I'm sorry. I, I I don't agree with her behavior whatsoever. Whatsoever. There is a way to handle everything, and they're writing her horribly. And I really like the actress. She's gorgeous. But um, Blaze is feeling, you know, a, a feeling. She's hurting for Brooklyn, you know, about her, about her losing her father-in-law. And Natalie is being an ass. I'm going to say it as usual, talking about, well, you know, nobody really knew him. She's talking about her about her and her daughter and her daughter has to check her and it gives Gregory's full name like what we don't know so and so and so and so then Natalie brings up Christina coming to uh, maybe Christina could come to help her her spirits even though she's late I'm oh, like that's mommy huh yeah and Blaze lets her know that she ain't coming and I wrote, this is what I wrote, guys. So this, this is how I, sh I really feel. Blaze is too nice. There is nothing wrong with respecting your mother. But it's a whole entire different thing when your mom is just plain out disrespectful to everybody that you care about or are cool with. And Natalie has been just plain out disrespectful, okay? Blaze tells her mom that they might be done talking over, that her and Chris might be over due to her talking to uh, Molly. And I felt like Nat Natalie was giving fake sympathy. Oh, well, you know, nothing lasts forever. Fake sympathy. And Blaze is like, well, you know, I thought we had a real chance. And her mom reminds her that she does. At least she got her music. And I'm like, girl, why are you even trusting her with your heart? You know what? Why are you even, why are you, why are you even doing that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give y'all some little insight, right? My, 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 my grown daughter, my adult daughter is dating. I don't, really too much care for the the man that she's talking to but I'm not gonna sit here and and uh, be fake to my daughter's face about it I'm gonna be polite to this young man I'm not gonna be rude to this young man he's not hitting or he's not doing anything physically to my daughter I just feel like my daughter could be doing a little something different a little something better that's just how moms are we want the best for our children right but I wouldn't be doing this 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 is this kind of thing this this, this kind of you know I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't be doing this. Doing the stuff that Natalie's doing. You know, not supporting her kid at all. Instead of saying what she's saying, you know, she could have been doing a lot more. I just, I wouldn't be doing this. I just wouldn't. I'm sorry. I don't agree with any of her actions. The recording guy is like a mate surprised that uh, Blaze is actually doing the song. And he was like, she nailed it the first time. Like, why are we even doing this? And, and 
I said, well, maybe this is just proof that Natalie was possibly being a hater the first time. And then this chick brings out notes and rewrites. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you got balls of steel. This woman is just a man. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, and hey, we got to hear Blaze sing again, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, this girl cannot sing. I don't want to hear her singing. And she's struggling. She's struggling. She doesn't feel the music. She feels like she's a fraud. And when her mom mentions Chris, calling Chris to come to the studio, Blaze is like, nah, she's probably feeling hurt and betrayed. And this is what I'm talking about. Um, I feel that, like, I don't understand. I wouldn't talk. I wouldn't talk to my mom about my relationship if I, my mom felt that salty about it. I wouldn't talk to her about it because she's not going to support it. She's not going to say, you know, encouragement. I wouldn't I wouldn't give her that energy. I wouldn't give her that, that weaponry. Like like I said, bring it back to me and my, kid, my, da my daughter. I wouldn't do that. Like when my daughter's doing something and is out of pocket with this dude that she's dating, I'm going to check her on it. But like, you know that you shouldn't be acting that way. You know you shouldn't be talking to them as a man. You shouldn't be doing that, Kyrie. Even though I still don't believe that they are fit for one another, I'm not going to be cool with my kid, you know, being extra or be doing too much, treating this per treating a person a certain way. I, I, there's got to be respect. And I just don't see... Now they don't respect her daughter. Now they definitely don't respect their relationship. And she tells her, basically... But now he's finally asked, well, what's going on between uh, you and Chris and Blaze? Fortunately, fortunately stonewalls her, but does give her enough for her mom to start digging. And I'm like, girl, can't you shut your effing mouth? I'd be like, damn, you why, you, why are you feeding? It's, God, Blaze can't be that lame, that stupid. I mean, guys, come on. I hate calling people stupid, but I would if somebody ain't supporting you, why, why, why you keep giving them fire to, to, to set your, your world on fire? Keep giving them gas to set your world on fire. I don't, I don't even, I wouldn't have told Natalie nothing. I would have told her it's between me and Christina and we gonna figure it out. She shouldn't have said nothing about Mr. Corinto. She shouldn't have said anything. She shouldn't have told her mom to go to Mr. Corinthos and ask him questions. She shouldn't have said nothing. I'm like, Blaze, you do have an issue with letting, the, you know, letting info out. That, that ain't good. Especially for Christina and who her daddy is. That ain't good. You you you, you got loose lips, girl. But when Nellie says that Blaze and Christina's relationship wasn't real, I was like, girl, I'm done. Girl, you is so overstepping. You so over. You have no right to, to, to you, you don't got no right for that. You need, girl, and Blaze like, you know, look, you making me angry. You know what I'm saying? And she don't like her mama calling her gullible. And that tells her that she can't call what her and Chris have as love. <laughs> Blaze finally has enough and tells her to leave the box. And I would have told my mama to leave the building. You're not just going to leave the box. You're going to go in, get into your car, and you're going to drive, mom. And I love you, and I'm going to talk to you later. Respectfully, I am asking you to just go home. Just go home. I do not want you here. I don't want this energy in this room. I don't want this energy in the studio area. I don't want this energy in the hallway. I would like for you to go home. And if you cannot go home, then we're just not going to do this. But once again, Blaze acting like a child. And I, and I wrote, you grown. Your mama do not respect you. Why are you acting like a kid? You can put your parent in their place without disrespecting your parent. Believe me, I have a mama. And she's overbearing. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I don't disrespect my mom, but I will remind her that I'm an adult. And there are certain things that she just, that, that, that just, no, we ain't flowing this way. We ain't flowing this way, mama. And I will politely and respectfully remove myself out of the situation so she don't cause me to sin and when i mean sin i mean you know be disrespectful to my mom so I, i'm i'm sorry guys i feel like blaze is acting like a kid and she needs to stand up to her mother because this is ridiculous her you just letting her your mom just talk whatever say whatever girl and i i heard her trying to get a little ah we are real da, 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 da. then i 
now you take your realness and you leave please because this is just too much you know what i'm saying and guys blaze cannot sing child i'm sorry i i don't i i I, that girl, mm -mm. I, I did not want to, y'all, I'm pretty sure, popular opinion, y'all agree with me, but guess who shows up, Chris, she finally does show up and see her boo, and Natalie just sitting there hating and hissing, I'm like, oh my goodness, and, I, and I'm pretty sure, Blaze had to see her, I'm making that face, like girl, you, but before um, Christina showed up to her to, 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 see, to hear Blaze in the studio, she went to the courthouse to check in with Moss and to check her about her pretending about not, you know, knowing what Blaze told her. And Moss was like, well, you know, I was just trying to, uh, where's it at? Ma let her know that she did see her after the wedding and she never mentioned anything to her. But if she wants her to, you know, to speak quiet and, you know, respect her feelings and not discuss or find out what's going on with her baby, then she'll just stay in her lane, even though that's obnoxious and rude. And the only thing I got to say is that um, it really didn't have anything to do with your baby. Like, your baby was fine. Um, this whole entire thing of Christina's supposed to be in a bubble while she's pregnant, while she's not supposed to avoid stress, and now she's not supposed to do, that's just not natural, that's, that's not reality, Christina can't walk in a bubble to cure your baby, no surrogate can, and it's so funny that, and I'm gonna bring it back, she was right, Molly was right when she said, if this was anybody else, would we be policing this person this way? You know what I'm saying? And then she says, like, she can't talk to her sister about what's going on with the baby. But you missing whole appointments, Molly. Did y'all work so much? You missing whole appointments. Ultrasound. Because you and TJ work. Are y'all going to have time for this baby? Uh, Peeps, are they going to have time? For this baby, I feel like this is this baby. Uh, this is something I wanted because I didn't have it like a handbag. Because a baby's not a handbag, you know what I'm saying? Baby is not a handbag. And with I can see Christina how she's gonna punch holes as far as trying to give them this baby. Like she's gonna be like, you weren't coming to no appointments. <laughs> And then this whole entire not discussing, you know, pregnancy thing and Molly still feeling like she ain't perfect because she can't have no babies. Girl, you still a woman, honey. God made you good. Okay? But I know it's a struggle for a lot of women, so I'm going to leave that alone because a lot of women do struggle with infertility and it's a serious thing. And the world does judge women when they can't, when either they can't get married or they ain't married or they can't have kids. The world does judge them. So I take that back, Molly. I'm sorry. Well, she's not a fictional character, but you know what I'm saying, guys. But I, I'm, guys, I'm, you know what? I don't even care about the Dave, Dave Davis. I don't even care about this family. It's like a knockoff brand of the Kardashians for me. <laughs> they all are. And Christina's baby bump looks so fake. It was like, ah. It's, oh, you know what, guys? I'm going to keep it real. Watching GH today, other than Gregory's thing, was kind of agonizing. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go ahead. Yep. It was kind of agonizing. Um, but I think that's all I have to say. Let me look. I talked about Christina. Yeah. Let's see. I did write, y'all family is obnoxious and it's unfair to watch out. <laughs> that's all I wrote. I'm sorry, guys. You were like, Tori, that was your note taking for this day. I, that scene was just like, I think they just did that scene in together. To me, I, the, the best scene of the day was um, the Gregory scene. I ain't going to say that watching Blaze and her mama go at it back and forth wasn't in, intriguing either. But I just don't like the, I don't like, I don't like I, that, that, that them, them kind of moms, you know, I don't agree with. I don't agree. That's not to me. To me, that's not momming. But I'm going to wrap this up, guys. I think I've talked about everything. Keep going. Yep, I, talk, I covered everything. Um, if I hadn't, guys, please, you know, put that in the comments. Y'all have a blessed night and an even better morning. And I will see you guys tomorrow. A blessed night and an even better morning.
I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm tired. I'll see you tomorrow, peeps. Good night.